Hey everyone, my name is Valerie and today I want to share some easy tricks to make your camera movements look super cool. These techniques are great for YouTube documentaries or other projects where you need to highlight details in a specific image or a video. I love this trick because it will make your scene look interesting even if nothing is animated in the shot. As you can see here, the picture is static and nothing is moving yet it still looks beautiful and polished. Look at the beautiful distortions happening here at the edges of the scene. I think it looks super cool. This will be a quick tutorial so let's get started. Alright, so first let's create our full HD composition, 30 frames per second, 50 seconds duration, and a black background. Now I want to show you where I got the image I'm using in this tutorial. I leave a link below for this website. You can find a lot of beautiful pictures from old books here. Uh, and all the pictures here are uh, free to use, which is very nice. In my case, I entered this uh, section and uh, somewhere at the bottom, I found this awesome Egyptian wall painting. You can use this one as well, the link is in the description. Ok, so now I'll import the picture and then let's start add it to the composition. The first thing we want to do is to convert this layer to a 3D layer. Make sure to use the 3D classic renderer here. If you don't see it, uh, hit a Ctrl or Command K to change it in the composition settings. Now to create the camera movement we need a new camera in the scene. So let's create one. And here I want to mention that in this tutorial I will show you how to achieve a similar result using two camera types. This way you will learn which camera to use in different situations. I will start with the one note camera and I'll uh, set the lens to 20 mm to get an uh, extreme distortion of the scene. You don't need to do it with me right now, I just want to show you the process real quick. If we want to achieve this interesting camera angles and movements, we need to find where we want to start the animation. So in this case, while using the one note camera, I can move the camera freely uh, and I can move it uh, through the position property by changing the values here. Then I can rotate the picture to create some interesting angles. Now I can bring the camera to its initial position and create the first keyframe for the position. Then move to the second uh, 10 and place the camera where I want it to be in, at the end of the scene. To make it a bit more interesting I can create an animation for the picture's rotation and time it together with the position animation. So in this case what creates the interesting angle is uh, the rotation of the picture. So in this case we are controlling like uh, two big properties. Uh, the position of the camera and the rotation of the picture. And that's the first method to achieve this look uh, while using the one note camera. In my opinion, to create this kind of animation, we should use the two note camera because it has the point of interest. As you can see, if I switch from the one note to the two note camera, we will see a line coming from the camera. That's the point of interest which anchors the camera angle to a specific point. That's why if we try to move it to the right, it will move but always look at the point of the interest position. As you can see, we can create very interesting angles using this feature. But using this feature and being able to move the camera position can be tricky as you may already figure it out. And that's exactly what I want to teach you in this tutorial. Let's now work together and create a two note camera with a 20 mm uh, lens. Alright, and now for the secret sauce. We need to add a new null object to the scene. Let's convert it to a 3D layer, change the null name to null camera 1, and then parent the camera to the null. Open the position for both of them and let's see what benefits we get from that. Let's play around with both of the position properties and find a nice place in the image to start the camera movement from. I'm trying to reach the upper left part of the picture. 
As you can see, I'm playing around with the camera position properties to achieve an interesting angle while adjusting the position of the null according to the camera angles. After finding a nice place, let's create the first keyframe for both. Now move 10 seconds forward and let's position the camera in the lower right side of the picture. Somewhere around here, where we can see the lady with the yellow dress. When using this technique, I usually avoid the empty spaces created in the frame during the extreme angles. To fix this, I just keep playing around with the different position axes of the two layers. Let's see how that looks. While your preview is rendering, I want to give you a quick heads up and tell you that I recently released a new course that will help you create explainer videos and multi-scenes projects using one crucial skill for motion designer, which is transitions. Knowing how to move from one scene to another can boost your confidence in After Effects as a beginner motion designer. I created a unique coupon code for my YouTube audience with a discount that will give you 30% off the new course. And if you are serious about your career, you can invest in the Motion Bundle deal that includes all the courses and additional bonuses. There is 60% off the bundle right now and I've created another coupon that will give you an additional 10% discount on top of the current 60%. All the coupons will expire in 3 days and the links are in the description. Alright, back to the tutorial. After creating an interesting camera angle and movement, I want to show you some easy tricks to make your scene look even better. First, we'll begin by creating a new adjustment layer and adding the CC lens effect to it. Most of the time, I see people use it in a way where the distortions come from the inside. I love to do the opposite. I want to give it a bit a more a rounded distortion, like an old TV effect. In my opinion, it looks great. But we do have a small problem now, the empty areas created by the distortion. To fix this, we need to add the transform effect on the same adjustment layer and place it above the lens effect. Now we can scale this up a little bit. Don't scale it too much because you don't want to lose the quality of the picture. I think it looks nice and because I don't want the empty spaces, I go back to the lens effect and lower the distortion. Now we can adjust the camera and the null position to fit the distortion along the entire sequence. I'm checking for the empty spaces and adjusting the position properties accordingly. Ok, everything looks great, now we can change the name of the adjustment layer so we know what effects we have on it. Next, let's create another adjustment layer and add the curse effect to make the scene look a bit more crispy. It looks better already. Now I want to make the edges of the scene look blurry. For this, we can open the camera options and uh, activate the depth of field. Set the aperture to 300 and the blur level to 100. As you can see, we now have a new focus point uh, in our scene while the edges are a bit uh, blurry. You can play around with the focus distance if you want uh, different parts to be in focus. For now, let's make those focus parts look more crispy. We can do this by adding a sharpen effect to our last adjustment layer and setting the amount to a higher number. In our case, we can set it to 100. Awesome. Now we can name the adjustment layer before moving on. I'll also want to show you a quick trick to make your scene look a bit more uh, contrasty. For this, we will create a new black solid and set the blending mode soft light. 
place it below the curves effect and uh, let's adjust the curves to fit the new look. Looks nice. As you can see, it makes a huge difference in the look of the scene without the solid and where we turn it on. Alright, now let's add some dreamy look to the scene. For this, let's create another adjustment layer and add the radial blur effect to it. Set the amount to 10 and change the type to stride zoom. Now we get this a nice blur smudge on the edges of the scene, but in my opinion it's uh, too much. Uh, in these situations I love to create an ellipse mask on the adjustment layer. Then let's uh, subtract it and now scale up the mask feather to 150. Finally, we can double click on the mask and scale it down from both sides uh, while holding a control or command. We can now lower the blur amount to 5 or maybe 8. Yeah, that's better. We're almost finished now and before moving on, let's change the name of the adjustment layer. Now to finish things up, let's create another adjustment layer and add uh, the fill effect to it. Let's mask this layer as well and subtract the mask as we did with the previous one. This time uh, set the feather to 200. This layer will serve us as a vignette that can add to the dreamy look we are trying to achieve. Now set the blending mode of this uh, layer to overlay and you will get a beautiful bright vignette. I want to make it uh, a bit more orangey so I'll adjust the fill color. Of course, we can adjust the mask size to make the vignette uh, a bit bigger. Yeah, that looks uh, great. Let's now change the name of the adjustment layer and see what we've got. While you're waiting for the renderer, subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it helpful. I finally want to get to 100,000 uh, subscribers here after a long 5 years of posting tutorials on YouTube. So, if you can help me with this, that will be cool. Alright, now finally, after you're satisfied with the angle, the look and the movement, you can easy ease the position keyframes for both the null and the camera to make the motion a bit uh, smoother, if you want of course. You don't have to do it if you feel like the motion is okay already. Alright, and with this we have finished the tutorial, I hope you enjoyed this one, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.